Greetings from Elite English Academy. Dear friends, in this video I am going to analyze the poem Because I Could Not Stop for Death. This poem is part of PGTRB English Syllabus Unit 6 American Literature. It is very important to understand the nuances of analyzing a poem because once you become familiar with that art, whatever may be the question asked based on the lines or poem, you can easily answer it. For example, in this poem, I am going to discuss the poem line by line, afterwards the themes, tone, mood, structure, literary devices, imagery, symbolism used in this poem. First, let's have a brief note on the author, Emily Dickinson. She lived between 1830 and 1886. She was a born American poet. So it is uh, very important to know the background of the author because regarding Emily Dickinson, most of her personal experiences get reflected in her poem. One basic information about her life. So mostly she was living alone. Her uh, house was located nearby the graveyard. So whenever she writes the death poem, poem related to the themes of death. So mostly this death imagery occurs repeatedly. So regarding the character of uh, Emily Dickinson, she was considered as eccentric and lived in isolation most of her life. First, she attended a school here and there. Afterwards, she remained in isolation. Regarding the publication, so in total, she has 1,800 poems to her credit. But when she was alive, only 10 poems and one letter were published. The first collection of the poem was published in 1890 by Thomas Wentworth. Higginson and Mabel Loomis Todd. So they are closely associated with her throughout her life. So this particular poem was published in the collection which was published in 1863 and it is believed that it should have been written between 1855 and 1863. So exact date of writing is not available. So in general, she has a unique technique to write her poem. Her poems contain short lines, typically lack titles. Without titles, she writes. And she often uses slant rhyme as well as unconventional capitalization and punctuation. Even in this poem, you can witness this technique. She has dedicated some of her poems to her sister-in-law Susan Huntington Gilbert Dickinson. Nearly 11 poems she has dedicated to her. So here in general this poem talks about the perspective of Emily Dickinson on death. So based on this biological information so we understand that what kind of Emily Dickinson was and how she, he, she, she should have written the poem. Now let's enter into the poem. Because I could not stop for death. The title itself is highly symbolic. Because the persons who are living in this world, they don't want to die. But the poet shows a kind of matured approach. She says that through the title, because I could not stop for death. Since she cannot stop the death, she accepts certain things. So the entire poem describes that. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. So here the important thing, he, he refers to the death. So it is personified. Kindly stopped for me. The carriage, the carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. So now we understand that there are three persons who are just starting the journey. So one is the narrator, maybe the poet, 
right second one death who is personified then along with these two one more person is there that is immortality so the three persons start their journey so in which they start their journey it is in the carriage carriage it is a chariot so in the western countries when the dead bodies are taken to the graveyard so they use a vehicle so here we can call it as carriage so the person death comes to her she cannot stop for death so death takes her in the carriage to a particular place when she goes along with them immortality also comes so this is the point so next we slowly draw so the journey has started he knew no haste haste means hurry so he is not in a hurry and i had put away my labor and leisure to for his civility so here when the journey starts the narrator says he is not in a hurry but i have to put away i have to suspend or stop my labor so i i had to give up my work labor means work and my leisure too so when i start accompanying death and immortality i stopped i suspended my work and leisure and his civility civility refers to a kind of gentle behavior so the poet or the narrator is taken from her home in a carriage along with immortality so they are going slowly in a gentle way so then uh, the poet uh, describes so what are the places they just cross first we pass the school where children stroll at recesses in the ring we pass the fields of gazing grain we pass the setting sun so what are the persons or places they just cross first the poet says that so we cross the school probably that is the school in which uh, she studied so in a longing way so she just uh, recalls the school life so when they cross the school they are just uh, children are playing straw at recesses recesses means a small uh, gap so there is uh, they just uh, play a game uh, with a ring so children uh, enter and coming out they are just playing so here uh, one uh, poetic device i would like to point out so if this particular line is given and asked what is the poetic device asked so here uh, r r so we can call it as alliteration so a repetition of uh, consonant sound in the beginning right so then we pass the fields then there is a uh, fields where crops are growing fields of gazing grain what do you mean by gaze gaze means it is uh, just look looking a kind of uh, seriously grain so we understand it is the time when the crops are grown uh, fully so it is a personification grains cannot look at us they do not have uh, eyes like human beings so here the grains are gazing so the poet feels that when they are cross the field the grains that are uh, growing there they are just uh, looking at us we pass the setting sun so what is the time of the journey it is evening so after the journey the poet uh, crosses the school and field and it is the evening time so that is the information we have to come to know here then the next stanza or rather he passed us who is referred as he it is the sun so the poet says either we passed the sun or the sun passed so just uh, personified again passed us the dews drew quivering and chill so here uh, the, this is the month in which so the dew drops are more quivering just uh, shaking when uh, early in the morning or in the evening when uh, there is chillness 
in the month of December or November when we go out, we'll be quivering, shivering, you know. So that is called referred as quivering and chill. So because of the dews, dews, you know, the dew drops from the uh, sky. So because of that, it is quivering and chill for only gossamer my gown. So here she is going to describe the dress that she is wearing. So what is gossamer? It is uh, that is uh, cobwebs spun by small spiders. So for only gossamer, so gossamer refers to go cobweb. So that is found in field and houses. But uh, she is uh, referring to headdress. It is like net like uh, dress. My gown. So the people who are wearing for Christian marriages, you know. So it is like uh, the fabric is like uh, it, uh, we can see through that fabric. So that is gossamer. My gown. My tippet. Tippet refers to a kind of scarf that is used by the priest at the time of performing mass prayer prayer. So here, since it is the she is wearing a kind of get wedding gown, she is wearing that tippet only tulip. So tulip uh, refers to a soft to fine silk cotton material like uh, net. So so in the entire uh, stanza, she is describing her rich gown. So even uh, at the time of death, the, the, the people are uh, neatly dressed, right? So that kind of uh, dress code is being discussed in this particular stanza. Next, we passed, so we stopped. We passed before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. So what is referred as house here? So why should the poet use the word house here? Actually house here refers to graveyard. Please make a note of it, graveyard. You can uh, see in Christian uh, graveyards. So there, uh, there will be thousands of hundreds of uh, graves and in which, <coughs> sorry, that uh, in a, above every grave there be a heap of sand. So here the poet says, we passed, we stopped before a house that seemed swelling of the ground, swelling of the ground. Here swelling of the ground refers to the heap of uh, sand above every grave which indicates there is a dead body or somebody is buried there. So the roof was scarcely visible. So here uh, she is uh, talking about the entrance of the graveyard. Normally in many places uh, in Christian villages, the graveyard is covered by a compound. And at the entrance, there is uh, just a big uh, arch. There is a big arch in which uh, something is uh, written, right? The roof was scarcely visible. So it is the evening time. It is uh, dew is there. So naturally in the evening time, so it is not visible, right? So the cornus, so what is uh, cornus? It is an ornamental molding round the wall overhang, uh, overhanging. For example, if you enter into the cave, especially during the winter season. So you can, uh, what uh, winter see, what you can see, you know, above from the top, you can see in the Western countries, the ice uh, will be there. So it will be hanging like uh, 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 knives. So you can see Amarnath uh, temple picture. So sometimes uh, you can see that uh, uh, the, what is that ice, uh, ice will be there like hanging like uh, that uh, knives. So cornus, just a, Imagine the entire team stops in front of the house. So actually that is graveyard. So there is a big arch. The arch is not visible properly because of the evening time and the ice cubes over there. So the entrance, the entrance is not clear because the, she was able to see the ice over there. The cornice in the ground. See, look at that. Here and there, she has used uh, hyphen. So these hyphens talk about, reflect, symbolically represent the detached uh, sense of the poet. She is not sure of, she is not sure of what she is seeing. So because she is facing the death, though she accepts 
death boldly and gracefully she is unsettled so the use of unnecessary hyphens indicate that so now we are moving to the last uh, stanza since then it is centuries suddenly there is a shift in the mood since then it is centuries and yet feels shorter than a day i first surmise the horses heads so much suddenly when she gets down from that uh, uh, chariot she happens to see the heads of the horses there are uh, two horses probably so surmise means think she thinks that so the heads of the horses indicate eternity please make a note of it so she thinks that after seeing the heads of the horses she thinks eternity eternity refers to endless nature endless nature so suddenly the poet thinks so for many years many centuries the same things happen the people are born and they die and just they come to the graveyard but uh, for them probably it looks like a day so it so happened when we complete something when we uh, join a course uh, just uh, it looks uh, five years i have to study three years i have to study so when you come out come to the last part of your thing especially the farewell party many people say just i don't know how the time uh, flew so people will say that like that she says that it has been centuries but it feels shorter than the day i first surmise the horses heads were towards eternity here there is an allusion so what is an allusion allusion refers to the reference to great incidents and great people here eternity according to christianity when uh, there is second coming the god will come and separate the people from uh, good people from bad people and he will sentence the bad people to go to hell and the good people will be taken to heaven so this is the christian belief so afterwards they will not have any death so both uh, the people who are in heaven uh, and people who are in hell they will have eternity for good people eternal happiness and the nearness of god and for bad people eternal suffering this kind of biblical idea is alluded here so it is a very important poem which talks about the point so regarding the theme we can consider it as like a uh, uh, death and uh, mortality immortality all these things are dis discussed so here we just uh, happen to see the poet started her journey from her house to another house so that uh, what is the second house here it is the graveyard so let now let's have a small uh, review of what we discussed and some of the important features to discuss so first one is rhyme scheme so here uh, we have uh, six stanzas of four lines though if your particular stanza has got uh, four lines that is called as uh, quatrains but uh, in this poem the poet does not follow any the rhyme scheme at all right so we can call it as a free verse then uh, it is a lyric in one way because here she is talking about uh, she is expressing her own uh, feeling so it can be considered as a lyric then theme as uh, mentioned earlier it is just uh, death mortality and immortality then uh, tone and mood first uh, regarding a uh, tone it is uh, it is uh, her tone is very gentle and matured and uh, she is very calm and suddenly at one point she turns cynical when she uses the word uh, chill and querying at that time she becomes a uh, sinister but again uh, she comes back to her normal measured uh, thing so mood how to identify the mood of a poem so uh, just uh, tell me after reading this poem for the first time what did you feel you might have felt uh, something sad a kind of sad feeling might have generated in your mind so it is a emotional poem so the mood is emotional then regarding the structure 
already i told you it is the sixth uh, sixth uh, stanza then uh, meter actually this is the part where the students go wrong in competitive exam so regarding the uh, this particular poem in every stanza there are four lines here first and third stanza please note it follows iambic tetrameter iambic tetrameter and second and fourth line follows iambic trimeter so here uh, iambic uh, refers to unstressed followed by unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable iambic uh, iambic means what you have to keep it in mind so there is unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable throughout the thing so if i go into that it will be another uh, uh, lesson so just uh, please note down this so first and third line follows iambic tetrameter and second and fourth lines uh, follow iambic trimeter then literary devices just uh, i pointed out uh, alliteration here and there then uh, allusion so allusion uh, refers to the christian imagery of uh, death then uh, personification what are the things personified here the death mortality and immortality then in german this is the device you have to understand see if you go back and see every stanza in only one stanza there will be a full stop in most of the stanzas there won't be a full stop whereas there will be a hyphen so when one line does not end and moves to another line then uh, that can be considered as enjambment enjambment how to identify enjambment so a poem is normally divided into stanzas so when one stanza does not end but the idea flows into or the end sentence flows into another stanza that can be call, called as enjambment then symbol so the entire poem is the symbolic representation of the life after uh, death right uh, dear friends i hope uh, you are familiar with all the the theme as well as uh, the poetic devices of this poem dear friends it is really interesting to analyze a poem like this once you understand the art of analyzing a poem any poem will be just easy for you for the competitive exam so we have analyzed poems like this in our lessons if you feel joining us you can call us so kindly share this video among your friends who are preparing for competitive exams like pgtrb polytechnic and net english examination so that they can also understand the art of analyzing a poem and they can get a few more marks thank you all the best